Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has connected with me recently. We've just hit 3,000 subscribers on this channel, which is just insane. So thank you, and if you aren't already, then maybe subscribe. I have been using this Dell 49 inch ultra wide monitor for the last year, but today I'm getting an upgrade. What? How? Why? How can you get an upgrade on an already monstrous 49 inch Dell curved ultra wide USB C display by swapping it with this? This is the Samsung G9. Very similar in terms of its specs, it is still a 49 inch ultra wide screen, it's still 5120 by 1440 resolution, but there are some noticeable differences. Firstly, this Samsung has a 1000, oh, this is really heavy. It has a 1000 R curve, which basically means that this screen will wrap around you at a bigger angle than the, the slightly, I'm gonna drop this. <laughs> it basically means the screen's gonna wrap around you much more rapidly rather than the flatter angle like this Dell has. It also runs at a maximum of 240 hertz rather than the Dell's standard 60 hertz. For those non-geeks around us, the higher the number, then the faster the panel can run. You likely won't notice it on day-to-day -day kind of businessy desktop, email, web browsing, those kind of things. But since selling my business, I've been having a lot more free time recently and I've been actually been getting back into my PC gaming somewhat and reclaiming some of my social life and talking to friends and people and stuff. Fun. And then lastly, one of the big spec changes when comparing this particular monitor to the Dell is that this screen does not have USB-C, unfortunately. So this does mean that you cannot dock a MacBook with a single cable to both charge and use the screen. But I have been using the CalDigit dock that's behind me for many, many years now. And from this dock, I charge my MacBook with the single USB-C cable. And the dock is then wired into the screen, other USB uh, devices, speakers, and all the other kind of things. So whilst I would have preferred to have a USB-C port included on this monitor to gain the better curve and the higher refresh rate, well, I'm actually willing to sacrifice USB-C. Okay, so um, let's uh, get this unboxed. And whilst we are unboxing this, there is something to mention. This monitor was actually released, I think, earlier this year. And there's loads of, I don't know why I'm moving that around. There's loads of tech reviewers that have reviewed this already on their YouTube channels. But what happened was when the product went on sale, there was an onslaught of posts online from unhappy buyers all over Reddit and forum posts, all saying that they had issues. There was light bleeding issues, plastic coming away from the glass and flickering issues when you enable a Windows feature called G-Sync. So it looks like Samsung had pulled the product as it's been unavailable for quite some time, at least here in this country. And when I looked at Amazon, it was showing this as a pre-order item. And also note that Amazon seemed to have this screen around like 80 pounds cheaper than anywhere else online I could find it. So um, so I'll put a link in the, in the description down below if you want to get your own. Yeah, excited. Wow, uh, first impressions, that 100R curve is so noticeable. It just wraps around you. And for those of you who are looking at this as your first 49 inch screen, yeah, 49 inches does sound like it's a ridiculous size, but it's actually the same as having two 27 inch displays side by side. So there's no difference to having dual displays than having one of these 49 inch screens. On the back of the screen, in terms of your in and outputs, you're getting a headphone ports, one HDMI, two display ports, one USB-B to connect it to your PC, and two normal USB ports. Unfortunately, there is no USB-C on this monitor, but as I mentioned, I'm using the uh, CalDigit dock here, so it doesn't actually cause me a problem, but it would have been nice to see that all the same. Okay, so of course, to address the obvious here, the 1000R curve, it's 
so much better, I think, in my opinion, than the Dell's flatter curve. I always found when I was sat on the Dell screen that I'd have to kind of almost look over to the sides when there was things over there. Whereas with this, I'm not having to look. I just literally turn my head a slight amount and I can see everything. I'm not actually literally having to kind of turn and kind of lean over which actually over the time and, and actually I've got back issues at the moment it seems I might need to be looking for a new chair and um, the, the curve I think 1000R curve is meant to be uh, replicating what the human eye can see um, in peripheral vision so you shouldn't actually have to turn your head but of course you know, you're not going to read text out of your peripheral vision are you can actually turn your head and, and read the text okay something to address here is that on the old models of this samsung g9 display there was a flickering issue when you enabled i think it was enabled g-sync or enabled hdr i'm glad to say that that's not actually a problem anyway on the one i've got now so i'm assuming they have come up with a fix i do now have everything set up properly which is the full 240 hertz display rgb color at a full 10-bit color depth and um hdr enabled and it's all just Working great, there's no flicker, nothing I can see at least, and um, certainly not the desktop, which is where it was more a, a prominent issue before, and definitely not in the games that I've played as well. And um, I think if anything, I'm actually struggling with my gaming PC to push the number of frames to get actually reach anywhere near that. So um, next thing for me to look at is to actually upgrade my gaming rig to see if I can get maybe a faster processor and a bit of memory in there. But, um, but yeah, overall impressions are the monitor is incredible. One thing to mention that I have noticed, I, I mentioned earlier that the base of the screen is uh, is thinner and there's less to it because it is a thinner frame, which you can see there, but it actually goes on for a much longer distance and actually spreads onto my mouse mat, my keyboard and mouse mat, and um, that's slightly annoying. So I might actually look at possibly wall mounting this. I'm not too sure yet, but yeah, as far as Windows goes, Windows, absolutely fine. Over to the Mac side now, I guess, and uh, we'll see how much progress we'll make with that. A few inches later. Okay, so I am having some issues with the MacBook Pro and the 49 inch Samsung monitor. It doesn't seem like you can get anything above 60 Hertz with the CalDigit dock that I'm using and the 2019 MacBook Pro or 2020 MacBook Pro uh, 16 inch model. Welcome back, we are now two days later after ordering some bits from Amazon. And things on a Mac aren't quite as simple or as easy as they should be, really. So firstly, just to reiterate, so I'm using the 16-inch MacBook Pro going into a, a CalDigit dock, which then goes into the screen because the screen itself doesn't have USB-C, so you need some sort of intermediary or a, a converter cable or something along those lines. So when going from the MacBook Pro to the CalDigit through USB-C, and then going from the CalDigit to the Samsung G9 using either a uh, USB-C to DisplayPort cable or just using a direct DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable, you cannot get the full 120 hertz or 240 hertz out of that monitor. So what you can do is you need to go to Amazon and buy this cable, which is a USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4 cable, and then connect this directly from your MacBook Pro to the screen, completely avoiding the dock uh, which is a bit of a shame. But using this cable, I have been able to get 120 hertz out of my MacBook Pro. I'll leave a link down below for those of you who need to grab one of these. So yes, I now have to connect two cables to my MacBook Pro when I want to use it at the full 120 hertz because I have to use my CalDigit dock for the um, SD card reader, loads of other USB uh, devices, the speakers, all sorts of other things are going into that one dock. Whereas to get the 120 hertz, I have to have the direct cable from the MacBook Pro through to the monitor. So not that great in all honesty. It would be nice to go through the CalDigit dock. I have contacted CalDigit now to ask if it's physically possible. I'm just waiting to hear back from them on that now. Overall impressions, fantastic screen. Un undoubtedly fantastic screen. You know, 120 hertz, you do notice it. Even on Mac OS, you notice that 120 hertz. On Windows, yes, you definitely notice 240 hertz. I haven't been able to get any games to go up to that full 240 hertz refresh rate but I have noticed significant improvements in you know, Call of Duty and Apex Legends and those kind of games. And just in day-to-day -day general usage, even when you're moving windows around, um, checking your emails, using web browsing, those kind of things, you notice it's just so much smoother, so much smoother. Do I think it's worth getting a 240 hertz monitor for productivity as well as gaming? I think I do actually, considering that the, the alternatives aren't actually that far off pricing wise, you know, there's a couple of hundred pounds difference or so. Um, which when you're already spending, you know, £1,000 or £1,200 or £1,300 on a screen of this size, it's not a huge difference to pay when you get that just jump in, in the frames per second, that massive benefit to get just, just, it just looks so much better. With the MacBook Pro and the CalDigit dock and any combination of either using this kind of fixed cable or a, a DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable, the best I could get out of all of that was 60 hertz on my Mac. As soon as I pushed it up to 120, 
it would just flicker, wouldn't actually give me a picture, and um, kind of looked like it was breaking my Mac or the screen. But yeah, if you do want to work at 120 hertz with a MacBook Pro, then you will need one of these cables. One other thing that I've actually found quite useful is that I now have my speakers connected to the back of the screen, which means I can now switch between multiple computers but use one set of speakers. So kind of using it like a KVM switch, but um, through the screen, which is, is quite, quite good actually. Other than that, I will leave it right there and um, go back to the other Pete as he's continuing his talking. If you do want to buy your very own, then follow the link in the description below to find the cheapest place to buy your very own. As always, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, all of that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.